Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we don't want the law involved in our town. You keep the law out of here. We do what we want. In we Virgin do what River. we want. We make our own rules. This was real uh, Ted Cruz, Fountainhead, Texas, you know, yeah. real. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? I don't know that there's a word that's not going to get me canceled. <laughs> so I'm not saying anything. Independent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what is the I word? Hold on. I have libertarian. Libertarian. Oh, there we go. There we go. This is some real libertarian shit. Here. Oh, it's fucking bonkers. Yes. Yeah, like, keep your hands uh, keep your law hands off my baby. Mm-hmm, is basically mm-hmm. what it is. Off anybody's baby because, mm-hmm. you know. But you know what? There's part of me that I'm kind of like, I get it. A hundred percent. I'm like, damn, how many times would I have loved to have dropped my kids off at a fire station for a couple of hours? Just No, I don't like, get that I'm part. But I'm I get teasing. the like, don't yeah. bring in an outside agency. We'll just handle this inside. Kind of get that a little bit. Yeah, totally. I'm just, but I'm also just saying it would be nice to be able to have just been able to drop those kids off somewhere and just disappear for a little while, knowing that somebody was going to step up until you decided to come back. I went back and forth on, I really want that little baby. Yeah. And then I would hear it cry and I'd be like, oh Oh my God. But but then I would really want it again when I saw, because I love babies. You know know. this. Love babies. It's so funny that you're saying this because when I was watching it, I was actually laying on the couch with the dogs. And every time the baby cried, the dogs would be like, (laughs) like peak right. And I'm like, I know, guys, I hate it too. (laughs) There's, um, so when my girls were babies, we lived in our old house, which was set up real weird. It was built on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. So like they were on the third floor and I was on the first. So they were two floors away from me. So I had to have the baby monitor. I could not hear them otherwise. You remember that when my boys were babies, they were on the third floor too. Remember? Mm -hmm. So I, I bought this baby monitor that wasn't like a consistent hum, but it would kick on when they would cry. Oh, yeah. And it- the sound of it would trigger anxiety. So now the sound of it still tri- – like if I hear a certain white noise frequency, <laughs> I'm like oh. – like I just get all stiff. Like Meh. I know. I know. You instantly become into like that like mode of like, oh, God, no, don't make a sound. Please. Yeah, I, I mean, please, I don't please, think please. I slept for like three four years. years. I know. Yeah. I it know, was dude. bad. It was crazy. I know. All right, so we're talking Virgin River, but I do need to address with you. Did you see the evidence dropped about Cam? Um, Mass. I sure did. <sighs> Guys, I'll put a timestamp here. We're going to chat about this for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. He is a cold, calculating sociopath. Um, I owe everyone an apology. A public and I- apology, and you're getting it because I said I would eat crow. I'm literally eating it right now. I am stunned that I actually got this right because you I know, know, I know I am a terrible judge of character. I know. I think David Koresh is cute. I would go <laughs> right into his cult. <laughs> like it, I'm just terrible at that kind of stuff. And Aim. there's something. So when Kevin Frazier said to him on the on the reunion, when he said to him, are you okay? I want to make sure you don't get worked up. And uh, he looked that like, like that smug smirk. smirk I and know. he was like, I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And then just reading the the language he uses in the text messages. I know. This guy I is know. cold and calculating and frankly, I, I'm I, terrified of him. I'm I know. And I so wanted to be right about him. I wanted like I gave him the benefit of all the doubts. You did. You did. And I understand what you were reacting to because he was yeah. putting go. Yeah. And the other thing too, though. This also sh- shone, shine, shone sure. a, a light on Claire's kind of a piece of shit, too, because she was also going along with it. Right. But I go back and forth on her because she was going along with it. But I read the the messages from his ex-girlfriend oh. and she was saying, like, he is such a sociopath and a mm. manipulator that you almost don't know how to react to him that's bad 
So when Claire was saying things in the text messages, like, because he's like, I formulated a plan. I don't know mm. how he talks. Um, she, Claire was saying things like, yeah, I hear you. Like, what is your plan? Like, it seemed like she was just kind of rolling with it. Uh, I don't and know. And he was like, I want to burn things down. Can you say I want to burn things down? I want to burn things down. With my ticker. With my ticker. <laughs> Here's a question I have, though. And okay. I'm being serious. And this okay. is going to sound real real lame but if you were in this situation at what point would you not like i would have been the person running to the experts being like he's fake he's fake like why was no one doing that this is the part that i I don't understand i think they were all afraid of their i i i think we have been manipulated as fuck by all of them yeah i do too I don't know. I don't. At this point, I, up is down. Down is up. Dogs are fucking cats. I don't know what's happening I here. Know, I don't I know, know what's happening. It's, Me too. It has sort of like tainted my view of the show. Mine too. Like I'm just like, that felt Big like a time. huge waste of my fucking time. time. And we put a lot of fucking time into this bullshit. Yes, we did. I know. And I it's feel like, duped. I feel duped. Yeah. Really I duped. But I, I, I that is a real like a blaring fucking question that I have is why... Like, if you legitimately went on the show to be married, at what point would you not have gone to producers or the experts or anyone that would listen and be like, this person is not here? Like, why were they not made aware? Like, this is that's the part that's so confusing for me. Like, I would have been little sistering my way right to the experts to tattle. Like, I, I don't know. The only thing I'm wondering is, is there a world in which Claire is like, I'm too humiliated to sit in front of America on camera and say, he wanted tall and slender and that wasn't me. But like, all is, four is of them? But all four of them? Yeah, they I don't know. They all did it. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. They like, all it- did it until Becca didn't. Right. But Becca when I'm stopped doing it at some point. What I'm saying though is like it's I'm not just saying like Claire, it yeah. like specifically, I mean like Emily too. I I, I don't understand I don't understand why they were not going to the experts and being like something's wrong. Yeah. I, I'm very interested to see next week to see mm-hmm. what Castor Pal and Pep have to say about this. And Pia, Pia, I feel like saw through this. So this will be real interesting. I know. And it's funny because remember, I didn't have a whole lot of faith in Pia. And now Mm -hmm. she's like the the cheese stands alone. Truly. Pia, I want to see Pia stand up and turn to Castor Pal and Pep. Punch him in the face. Give me licenses right now. Give them to me because I own them. Mm -hmm. That's what Mm -hmm. I want to see happen. I own your asses. Truly. I want to see that happen. I know. I know. Okay, that's enough with maths talk. Let's move on to the main event. What are we here for? We are here for Virgin River, season one, episode two, Lost. I know a lot of the backdoor friends started watching Virgin River for this recap. I really am interested to hear what they're thinking. Me too. Mm -hmm. I hope they're watching because a lot of them said they were going to watch. They better be. I just, guys, hang in there, gets better. Hang in there. You guys, it gets so fucking good. It it gets, I mean, there's a fucking cupcake truck. You really? There's a drug Nana. Hang in there. There's a drug Nana. I mean, Maya (laughs) Angela. I love, I like getting giddy over this shit. Again, I want to remind everyone this is a rewatch. There are some things that come up in this that we have to be careful not to spoil what we know. I know. So we will do our best to mm-hmm. not spoil major plot points, but just yeah. know that we can't always guarantee that something's not going to come flying yeah. out of our mouths. I'll try like, real hard because I am i don't like to be spoiled, so I yeah. don't ever want to do that to anybody. And I spoil so you I, constantly. Constantly. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. I was um, born spoiled. When you saw the mass reunion before me, you were like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, tell me, tell me everything, tell me. Mm-hmm. You're like, no, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Yes, spoil it for me. Tell me everything. And I did. Because with me, it's I don't have patience. Mm, okay. That's my problem. Mm-hmm. I'll still watch mm. it, but I want to know. Okay. Some yeah. It's weird because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Yeah. Well. I am weird. All right. So I guess we I'm open on Mel psycho. and Jack. They're rushing that baby into the clinic. Mm-hmm. And Jack is real intent on gender norming this baby to be a male. Oh, oh, I know. Yes. He's like, what is this strong 
Lad, strapping lad? Would it be strapping lad? Strapping boy. What is this strapping boy doing? Do you think like, it's because he was like, I mean, the baby wasn't dressed in pink. The Right. It was dressed in neutral colors. Neutral colors. Like, why not say the baby? True. Oh, I know, but yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. But yeah. like, clearly it's because it wasn't in pink that he wouldn't yeah. call it a girl, which whatever. He's, did you see how hot he looked holding it though? He looked real hot. The baby so cute. Mm, it's I a wrote, real cute baby one. so cute. I want it now. That will change. Mm -hmm. Okay. But did you see its little feet and like the little white booty socks? I was like, it oh, was adorable. I dude. It was I adorable. So the baby has a note pinned to her that says, "She will be better off with someone else. Please know that I love her and I'm doing this for her." Mm -hmm. So they quickly discover this is a girl. Mel takes a little peek under the diaper. Okay. Mel wants to call Doc, but Jack. Who seems to know where everyone, everyone is, is in town? I was thinking the same thing. How did he know? He goes a house call. Yeah, he goes. Doc is on a house call out on Myers Flat, and there's no reception there. How do you know this? I don't know. What I'm was telling Jack you. doing snooping around that clinic at seven a.m. Because he's. I mean, he. I don't know. Do you think I don't he's talking know. Mel. Do we think he's talking Mel? No. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I don't if, know. There's if no I was anything. writing this shit, that would happen. <laughs> so Mel says. Shit would be real dark. Mel says, well, we need to call child services, mm -hmm. like clearly. And the baby starts crying and all of a sudden I don't want it anymore. Right. But, <laughs> My dogs are whining. They're <laughs> like nervous. Yeah, no. We threw just, that baby right off the window. <laughs> just then Doc comes in and he's like, where did this baby come from? And Mel's like. We got to call social services. No, 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 no. Hands mm -hmm. off my liberty. Yeah. Get away from me. And he's like, if you don't get out or if you don't like it, you get out before I get my fucking gun and shoot you. God, he did say that. He did not say that. <laughs> but he did say at one point, did he threaten to shoot you again? And Mel's like, not yet. Not yet. So not yet. Every, the whole town knows he has gun fever. Oh, that's weird. So Connie comes running over with diapers and formula. So how this fast is, did that happen? This is literally the timeline. Bring, bring. Hey, Connie, it's Jack. First of all, you give Jack a task and he's like, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. I'm on it. That's it. That's we us. all need a Jack in our yes. life. So she's like, I need diapers and formula. I'm on it. He calls Connie. Bring, bring. Let's reenact. All right. You be Jack. I'll be Connie. Hello. Uh, Connie, it's uh, Jack. I, uh, sis, where, we found a baby. It's Jack. Of course. Did you know who is he is? at Myers flat? What time you is it? You need to bring di diapers and formula over here. Bye. And then she's at the door. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't get it from my imitation, uh, Connie's a little bit of a nosy lady. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit of a busybody. Oh, yeah. So she comes running over and Connie meets Mel and she's like, wow, you are hot. Jack was <laughs> right. I could rub up against you, too. Like, <laughs> Connie owns the general store. She's the town busybody and she is going to activate the Virgin River phone tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This this is a, a character in the show, guys. The phone tree. Get used to it. Yeah. It's basically like a game of telephone. Whatever. Truly. It's not that complex. I don't no. know why we have to call it something. So Hope and Doc have a fight now. And he says he's so thrilled that Mel is quitting that he is like a kid counting down to Christmas to get rid of her. I know. And Hope's like, you're an asshole. And he goes, mm -hmm. no time for sweet talk, honey. He's real gruff. He's he's the worst. I have a question about Hope. But okay. Maybe we'll get there. Don't let me forget. Keep going. Okay. So Doc doesn't even want to leave this baby with Mel. He doesn't even trust Mel to hold a baby. I know. Like, come on. Seriously, dude. She's like, I'm a certified midwife, dude. What yeah, are like, you talking about? Fuck off. Now Jack gets a <sighs> mysterious phone call and he's doing the, okay, okay, yeah, I'll be right over. I'll be right over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, take your bra off and wait in the bed for me. Okay, I'll be right over. Click. Mm, click. So yeah. we don't we don't know what's going on. Mm. So now Hope goes into the clinic and she and Jack have a whisper fight about keeping Mel in Virgin River. Which and is it's like, so weird. I know. He's like, I'll speed up the remodel on the cabin. We yeah. want her to stay. We want her to stay. And Hope is like, I'm going to take my time looking for her replacement. Let's make Virgin River a little more attractive. Okay. I mean, okay. Okay. Wow. I mean, you have let's let's rehash. Okay. We have Hot Jack. Mm, hot Hot who Jack. Owns a bar that is within walking distance mm -hmm. where there's gourmet food being prepped constantly. And you're staying in this cabin for free. 
I would say Virgin River is already pretty attractive. Um, have you seen the cabin? And the other direction is a cupcake truck. <laughs> I knew you would be sold in the cupcake truck. It's I would have been sold by truck. I know the cupcake, the cupcake truck. truck. But like, I would have been sold by the fact that they have coffee, and I could walk to it and not have to make it myself. Yes. And that's, that's appealing to me. Now, later we learn that Jack does have rooms a- above the bar. I don't know why he doesn't offer her one to stay there. And she I has to stay with Nick the Groper. I didn't understand that either. Mm-mm. I don't know. Those rooms aren't at play yet. Or Brady's mm. taking one up. I don't really know what's happening. So Mel is rocking the baby and Joey calls her. And she's like, I'm really concerned that you're alone with the baby. And yeah. she's like. Mel goes, I put my notice in. As soon as they find my replacement, I'm done. And Joey's like, great, you could come back home. And Mel's like, no, No. I'm not coming back to L.A. I'm done there. L.A. is a cesspool. I have seen the promised land of Virgin River. I am staying (laughs) here where I have my liberty and no law and a hot bartender. Uh, I mean, is it a question? Well, then Mel gets a little pissed off at her. And she's like, stop trying to fix my life, bitch. Yeah, click. Then we get a Spurs, flashback. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we feel this hard. My we, sister feels this way about me every day. We get a flashback of, see, Jenny doesn't try to fix my life because she doesn't give a shit about it. <laughs> She's just like, oh, whatever, your house is burning down? Okay. <laughs> so we get a flashback of Joey and Mel looking at a photo album and they see their dead sister, Chloe. That's really Whoa, sad. That That's is really sad. sad. I was like, but things like, took a turn here. Little Mel didn't even know that Chloe existed, which was super weird. It was kind of weird. Like, this is a thing with my Graham had like a bunch of miscarriages and never told anybody. Things in the my Graham was born in 1934. That generation kept secrets. It's not common to see it. Like Mel's parents would probably be our age, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit older. It's not that common to see it, but I don't know. Maybe. All right. So I have a story. So I have a very good friend that I have known for at least 30 years. It's not me. It's not you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who it is. She's not listening, but then that's, that's fine. fine. Um, I just found out like a year ago that she had a brother that died, an older brother. Um. That when he passed away, and he was very young, he was like seven years old when he passed away. Oh. That like her family, like her mom and dad never spoke about ever again because they were so Mm. torn up over it Mm. that he was never even like never celebrated, never spoke. Like it was like he wasn't there. And I I know that was like a whole thing. That was how people grieved. Yeah. That was very common. But it's wild to me. I was talking to her about that. I'm like, how – I didn't even know this. Mm-mm. She's like, no, we weren't allowed to talk about it. That's crazy to me. My mother's father died when she was young. She mm-hmm. wasn't super young. She was like 20. Yeah, but young but it enough. was a, it a was young a, adult. It was a seminal moment in her life, right? She had just had me. She had Jenny already. Like she was, you know, starting her life. Right. We never were allowed to talk about it. I never t- talked about it. My Isn't grandmother talked about him all the time. My mother, it was like she was made out of glass and we couldn't even speak his name or she would crumble. Like it was mm. so, it was just an unspoken rule in our house that we didn't mention him. So that was wild. It. Yeah. It's some people just grieve that way. And I, I think know. that's less common today. Like I think even, so too because of like therapy and stuff. Yeah. Even going through this with Timmy and with your dad and my grandma. Like, it brings comfort to talk about my gram now. Me too. It didn't for like maybe, you know, three or four months. It was mm-hmm. real hard to talk about her. But like, don't you find comfort telling stories about your dad? Well, I never shut up about my dad, even on this right. podcast. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's kind of sad, right? Because it's like, if we stop talking about them, then they just go away. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I'm doing the family history right now, and I found that my Graham had like an uncle. I think mm-hmm. his name was like Bunky or something funny. Oh my gosh. Who I never knew existed. My mother never knew existed uh, because he went to California. Like that's what, oh, you know, when wow. you moved away from yeah, the family in the done. 40s, you were dead. Yeah. No one ever heard from him again. No it's one ever crazy. talked about him again. Like if I didn't stumble across his birth certificate. and You would never know. He, right. And he's like, he went on to live like a normal life. Right. But he just like 
who remembers him? Like that always freaks me out. Is me the too. who will carry me on? Who will remember? I me? know. So I don't I know. know. But I think you know we're seeing this kind of. But even Mel with her baby, like she's not talking about any of it. I know. Real weird. Real I don't weird. know. Like I must be a weirdo because I'm somebody that when I'm going through shit, I'll talk to anybody about it. I do too. But that's not common. I know. It's yeah. probably not good either. Well, I mean, in I think in regular doses, it's fine, mm. you know, but I don't Maybe. know. Yeah, weird. I think some people have a hard time. There's a certain vulnerability to that, and some people sure. have a hard time being vulnerable, and mm -hmm. that's fine, you true. know? Sure, true. Hey, everyone. Stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. So we get um, Ricky and Jack. They're cleaning out the cabin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they have a lot of work to do on this cap. Oh, it's, my God. First of all, they take all the furniture out of it. I'm like, just start a fire. Just <laughs> light it all on fire right now. <laughs> do not even bother. What are you going to power wash that 1970s velour please, couch? Please don't. <laughs> so N Ricky says, guess what? I'm signing up. I'm enlisting. As soon as I graduate, I want to be a Marine like you, Jack. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Jack's superhero. like superhero. Jack's like, dude, things aren't like when I was a kid 10 years ago. Like, he's not that <laughs> know. much older than Ricky. I know, I know. <laughs> and he's like, you need a degree. And then, you know, they, they chat a little bit. And finally, Jack's like, okay, you know, fine. If you want to do this, do it. Then Ricky smashes a glass and Jack goes into a flashback. <laughs> I know. Of I a know. war zone. That could be a PTSD response. Of course. But we were just like, what? What? I know. So then I wrote the worst sentence ever. I wrote, he slugs a swig of his flask. I don't know if that's a real thing. I mean. Is he slugging the swig or he's swigging? He takes a swig. Thank you. So now Lily swings by the clinic mm. with a bunch of shit for this baby. Mm -hmm. And Mel's trying to get the baby to feed. And that's a constant theme throughout the whole episode. Yeah, the baby, baby won't, won't eat. Mm -mm. Doc. He kind of has an old school approach, which I agree with, is the baby will eat when it's hungry. I agree with this too. Yeah. Because I, I do, do want to say I didn't know that baby didn't act hungry. Not from what I was no, seeing. It wasn't no. acting hungry mm -mm. or crying really. It kind of no. wasn't doing anything. No. I think when you're breastfeeding and getting a baby to latch, that's a whole science and a but whole thing. A whole but that's not what was no. happening here. No. Right. So, uh, and I come, also think not to, sorry, I cut you no, off. I also think it's been like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so maybe they're just trying to get the baby to shut up, which <laughs> I understand that. So now Connie rushes in. She's like, you're giving that beautiful baby away. How dare you? I know. And Mel's like, look, the state of California says we have to call social services. Yeah. Connie's like, oh, please, mind your own fucking business, pretty much. Whoa. And Mel is like, this uh, is my business. She's not a puppy that we can just keep. Right. Connie says, listen, fucking outsider, keep your, in Virgin River, we take care of our own. Keep your California rules somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. She's pissed. You will, you will come to learn in this show, guys, California is like... They just, you know, L.A., I should say, because they're in California. Right. But they just see Mel as like this, fuck you, go back to L.A., go back to the big city. Yeah. There's this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So we go over to Jack's bar, and it is jam-packed. Yes. I didn't always. even know as many people lived in Virgin River. In Virgin River. River, I know. And Preach, <laughs> Preach, is not happy because Brady is a terrible waiter. Terrible and staff person. Terrible human. No, he's not. Yes, he is. How dare you? <sighs> now for the misogynistic part of the program. Oh, great. Some dude wanders into the clinic and he's like, where's Doc? And his name is Charlie and he doesn't want a female handling yeah. his business. Uh-huh. Sir. Kay. He was very old as well. Let's point that out. He wasn't just like... This so he, 30 year old guy. He, he was, was older. So he was probably your dad's generation. Would your dad mm -hmm. balk at a female doctor? No. 
Okay. I could see your dad making some inappropriate jokes about um, it. Do we know, do you know, do I have to tell the story about my dad and his oncologist? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. But no, yes. I mean, I'm just teasing. I know, but I'm no, teasing. he would like razz the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. Like they I could joked. see that. Yeah. Like it was funny. I could see that. Yeah. So meanwhile, he says he, Charlie was adopted. So he understands that yeah. Mel has to do what she has to do. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. Now, Jack. Again, Jack needs therapy because he needs to learn boundaries. He oh, is God. a fixer and a helper. And now he swings by the bakery truck and he's picking up coffee for Mel. I know. So Paige is there. And Jack's like, what the fuck? Why would a mother give up her baby? And Paige is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't yeah. judge mothers who give up their kids because I'm going to do it in a couple mm-hmm. seasons. Oh, you She's- just did it, Amy. Oh, I'm sorry. I spoiled. Eh. Sorry. I'm not saying how she's giving up a child or even if it's goofball Christopher. So uh, he's like, Paige is like, just mind your own business. I don't like the law up in my business. Keep the law out of Virgin River. Now Christopher comes over. I hate this kid. I hate this kid. Why? What is wrong with Mm. me that I hate this kid so Mm. much? Like, I hate him. This poor actor is probably like, why do I have to act a fool? Like this character, because now Jack goes, Hey, Christopher, you know what Preach needs when the diners or when the restaurant's real busy on Saturday morning? Why don't you come over and help him make pancakes? Yeah. What? Has anyone ever cooked with a child? Clearly not in Virgin River. No. No. It's a nightmare. No. It's a nightmare. Keep those little shits out of the kitchen. There will be hair in your pancakes. I'm just putting that out there. And like boogers and God only knows what else. No. No, Thank you. Mm -mm. Ugh. So Jack brings Mel the coffee and they talk a little bit about Joey being bossy. We learn that Jack has four sisters. Yes. Mel. Mel. Okay. So. I have a question for you, okay? All right. There is this reoccurring theme. So mm-hmm. the the initial conflict at the center of this episode is that Doc wants to find the baby's mother and resolve this personally. Mm-hmm. Mel wants to call child services and obey the law, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why does Doc want to find the mother? The mother clearly doesn't want the child. I don't understand either. What is he going to do? Just find her to shame her? I Well... I, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand either. I, d- I really don't. I don't get it. Like, is like, he going to try to pressure the mother into taking the baby back? Clearly. The right? only The only thing I could think is maybe he's worried that the mother's in some kind of mental health, health crisis. Health crisis, maybe. But that's not what he says. Yeah, and that's not – giving her the baby back isn't going to help no, that. No, no, sir. Clearly Ugh. he's never had a baby. It's just weird. It's real weird. We do learn some interesting backstory about Doc here. We learn that he had a big wig job in Seattle at one of the best hospitals out there. Yep. And Jack's like, but he gave it all up because, you know, bureaucracy Mm -hmm. and uh, red tape and the law. And the paperwork. (laughs) Fucker. Jack is a real rule follower. Jack is a Marine. He follows the rules. So he understands why Mel but he doesn't follow the rules. He, he just doesn't follow the rules at the all. Rules. Right. Right. So he says, you just have to understand, Mel, you big city slicker, that uh, rules don't always apply. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So he says, here in Virgin River, people depend on each other. That's how we get through. Yeah. I mean. Now, I will say that I live in sort of a small town. Okay. And there is a nice sense of community. Like when somebody is, you know, right. in a situation, we all pull together. We have these little things that like, oh, if you need a hole dug, you call Stanley. Or if you need this, you call Lorraine. Or mm-hmm. we do this. Like there is, I love that about I where I that. live. It's, I love that too. I wish I had that. It's really kind of cool. Like having lived in a city my whole life, mm-hmm. I never had that. Right. So it is kind of cool. So I get it to an extent, but. You also can't expect medical licensed professionals to not obey the laws. Like she could lose her nursing license over this. But I don't think like these people don't, I don't think any of them have ever really had to pay a consequence. Like if you think about it. So 
it's like this weird little culty town where everybody just covers up for everybody. This would be like if the backdoor friends took over a town. Oh my God, that's exactly what it is. We would just <gasps> cover up for all of us. That's actually oh, a really good idea. So-and-so accidentally murdered the postman. Uh, we'll be right over. Yeah. We'll be right over to help I'll you. be like, Aim, bring my tarp. <laughs> Amy's just going to live at the cupcake truck. I'll just be there eating a different flavor cupcake every day. <laughs> I'll be the idiot driving, running around, digging ditches. Christopher is uh, not allowed in the town. No, 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 no. Christopher has been banned. Mm -hmm. no. Jack's allowed in and Brady. Uh -uh. That's Brady can stay in your house. That's about <laughs> it. He's on house arrest. <laughs> he can't go outside. He's got his ankle bracelet. <laughs> can't come off the porch. <laughs> So now we get a flashback of Mel and Mark, her husband. Mm -hmm. They run into one another at a cafe. They discover that they both are runners. So he says, you know, let me show you some trails. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. You know what trail he's talking uh -huh, about. The trail uh -huh. to his V in her V. And so now we cut to drug camp. Dun, dun, dun. I know. Guys. Drug camp is a thing. Okay. Oh, it's a whole it's thing. A it's a like whole drug thing. mountain. Yes, yes. So it's Doc. He's at drug camp. And mm -hmm. he's bringing Jimmy. 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 And some of his pals, some medical supplies. Doc wants to see Maxine, the young pregnant girl that he saw yeah. here a couple, couple weeks, weeks ago. ago. Spencer, who's easily buy bought off by what it looks like a $5 bill, <laughs> gives up her location right away. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine what world are you living in that like you are truly running your own community on a mountain with people living in tents oh i think this happens i think I this is no, real i think it does too but i'm just yeah. saying like it's wild this is this a hundred percent happens in this area of california I bet, but yes. like it's it's such a wild concept to me. But what I love, what's so funny is, so you have Spencer, uh -huh. okay, who's supposedly the baby daddy, and Jimmy standing all menacing in the background. These two can't act their way out of a paper bag, right? I know, it's so bad. And uh, Doc's like, well, Spencer, how much <laughs> is this information going to cost me? And Spencer's like... Well, I'm not telling you where that girl is. And then, like, Doc starts to put his wallet away. And then Spencer's like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Oh, and Doc literally, like, pulls out a five. <laughs> five will do. <laughs> Pack of smokes. <laughs> you cannot buy smokes for no, under $5. I know, now. I know, Do you I know. know cigarettes are, like, 12 or $13 a pack? It's disgusting. It's gross. They, they're, I hate them anyway, so, yeah. yeah. But that's a lot of money. It's a lot. Yeah. So, of course, we get um, Doc, like, wandering around looking for this girl. And he learns that she is at a gas station. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, I'm going to go to the gas station because I think she's the mother of the baby. Again, I don't know why we're doing this, but whatever. In Clear River, the near neighboring town. Clear River, yes. Clear River, Virgin River. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is Virgin so River cloudy? Oh, That's maybe. I want to know. Is maybe. the water not safe? That you have Do to you go remember to Clear River? Do you remember how polluted the Lankwan River was when um, you were growing up? Like, we were not yeah. allowed near it. Uh, no, because you would come out with something growing out of your forehead. Yeah, yeah we were not allowed near <laughs> no. it. No. So in Virgin River, the entire bar, a hush falls over the entire bar as Mel walks in with the baby. Mm -hmm. And Steph, Mel's very tired because she's been a mom for like five hours minutes. now. And she's she's exhausted. <laughs> exhausted. Minutes but okay go ahead oh so hope and jack are like you hope and jack are grooming the shit out of this girl it's creepy no it's wild. they're like maybe you need to go take a nap maybe you need to go take a nap and then i wrote oh wait no she's going to a homemade batting cage that jack set up thank okay to relax the amy uh -uh, now this, no. now don't get me wrong going into the woods with jack might be relaxing for me in many ways mm -hmm. but Guys, if you haven't watched this before, a common theme is that Jack has access to all sorts of ambient lighting. <laughs> and this is just this is just another example. He has these beautiful lights up and they're they're at this batting cage. Okay. In the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So of course we get the obligatory, like, I gotta get up on your hips and show yeah, you how to show how you to how bat to, and grab my choke. dick into your ass cheeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I mean, I might be alright with that. <laughs> they talk about their parents. <laughs> Thank God. And Mel says she's pretty much an orphan. Her mother died from cancer when she was eleven, mm-hmm. and. That's the reason that she's a nurse. And she tells this story, and I was almost crying. I know. She tells this story about how when her mom was dying, how she was so scared to say goodbye to her. So she was sitting alone. A nurse came over and comforted her. And she says the nurse helped her get through the hardest day of her life. And she realized that this is what she wanted to do for other people. It's very sweet. Can I tell you that I had a very similar experience when my dad was in hospice? With the nurse? Mm Mm-hmm. I was terrified to go in the room and see my father. I don't know why, because I saw him five minutes before we brought him there. (laughs) But I was truly, truly terrified, and I was so upset. Yeah. And this wonderful hospice nurse, like, pulled me aside, and, like, she was like, honey, this is your time to be the daughter. You're not Mm -hmm. the caregiver anymore. It's okay. Like, Mm -hmm. I will forever be – I have no idea who she was. Yeah. But yeah, I had a, I had a very similar wonderful experience in hospice with a nurse. You know, you just wonder like how these people do this day in and day out. I know like, it's I, it takes if, a real special true. If we soul. have hospice nurse backdoor friends out there, we salute you seriously for yeah, real. Yeah, absolutely. no joke because they see people at their lowest. No, and they're they literal angels them. on earth sometimes. Yeah. Truly. Yep. So. Uh, Jack is like rocked by this. He's like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So now we see Hope at the clinic and she's rocking the baby in the stroller. And Mel comes in and she's like, oh, you're natural with that baby. And Hope says, nope, not me. I raised husbands, not babies. One was her soulmate. One was the bane of her existence. And one was the best three months of her life. Don't don't say a spoiler. I'm not. Okay. But this is this was my question. I completely forgot that she had multiple husbands until I saw this again. Multiple husbands, yes. Did you did you remember this? I, didn't. I remembered. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I fucking this is like my fourth time watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, guys, we just had to cut a big part because Stephanie just said the spoiler out loud. <laughs> Which I, I will probably do as well. We have to catch each other when we and do that. And the funny thing is, I didn't even know that I said it. I'm like, yeah. what's spoiler? <laughs> so Lily comes in. Lily, again, coming back with extra clothes. And she yeah. volunteers to hold Chloe and take care of her. And she's like taking care of And Mel steps out and calls social services. Mm-hmm. At the bar, Brady is like, look, Jack, I, I don't want to wait do tables, this. man. I'm done I with suck. this. I want to get shit. on my motorcycle. I want to bang Amy Archer. I want to do the things in life I want to do. Yeah. I mean, working is just not what he wants Mm-mm. to do. Mm-mm. He's not an honest working man. No. <laughs> he leaves <laughs> and Preach is a real asshole about the whole situation. Amy, newsflash. Backdoor friends. Preach is just a fucking asshole. He's an asshole. I fucking Ugh. hate Preacher. So, I mean, he's good to look at, but his personality is in the toilet. Yeah, that's it. Take your shirt off and just stand in a corner. So Jack is like, ease off, dude. Like, he's just trying to make a fresh start. I'm trying to help him out. And Preach is like, how many times can one person start over? Uh, How about however many times times they want, Preach? That's called the human condition. Yeah, he's a real dick. Now Jack gets another mysterious phone call. He's like, Hmm. hello. Yeah, yeah. No, I got the condoms. I'll be over to bang it. Just lay on the bed and get ready for me. I'll put the P in the V. Okay, bye. Love so you, bye. now Doc and <laughs> – Love you, bye. <laughs> Doc and Mel chat, and he's thinking maybe the girl from the pot camp is the mom. And I again wrote, why are they trying to find the mom? We don't know. Mm-hmm. So Mel tells him – Guess what? I called social services and Doc freaks the fuck out. He, you had no right. No right. He's literally like screaming and pointing. Mm-hmm. There is something about being pointed at that mm. I uh, – uh, Well, you mm-mm. know my story about the pointing. Do I? So when I was a kid, Jenny used to scorch me in many different ways. Oh, I'm so shocked. And one of the ways is she would just point at me and I'm I would not start touching screaming. You? Yeah. No, she would oh. just point. From oh. across the room or wherever she was, and she would like do it with the look on her face, Amy. and I would be screaming and crying and freaking out. Nothing about this surprises me. <laughs> I was so In easy. Fact, I was so easy to manipulate. There's something so fucking hilarious to me about Jenny. Like, and I don't even know why. She's just the biggest tormentor. Because she's, yes, yeah, she's a torment. She's it's- a dementor from Harry <laughs> Potter, 100%. So Mel says to him, 
The baby's welfare is more important than your ego. Wow. And he fires her. And this is where Jack says, did he threaten to shoot you? Or somebody yeah, says that somebody, at some point. Uh, and she's like, not yet. Not yet. So now we see Jack coming home and dun, 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 he's got a girlfriend. <gasps> and they bang. Gasp. They Gasp. bang. Did you even know that he had a girlfriend? That oh. motherfucker. Yeah, I did. Well, now, <laughs> but I'm just pretending we didn't see it. So Mel heads back to the clinic and she finds Lily like very peacefully feeding Chloe and she realizes in that moment that Lily is the baby's mother. Well, she sees Lily very peacefully breastfeeding mm -hmm. the no, baby. She breastfeeding her? Yes, yeah, she did. She had her boob out. Is she breastfeeding her? I swear to God, she had her boob out because I was like, oh, she's got nice boobies. I need to I need to look it up. Hold All on. Right. That changes things. Amy, I swear to God, okay. she was breastfeeding. No, oh, my God. Did I just make right. that? I'm never right. I probably just made that up. Guys, we're back. She indeed had the boob out. She did. She it was, was a, breastfeeding. It was a Whoa. nice one. Oh, I know. Okay. I thought she had the bottle in the baby's mouth and it was like, okay, she can feed the baby. Oh. No, Amy, it was her titty. Oh. Okay. She was this, feeding it. Okay, so no wonder why Mel knew it was yeah. cuz I don't <laughs> think was Lily's a wet nurse like, oh, or anything. No. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Okay. That's I was even like, "Whoa." Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. guys. So that's the end. Uh very happy to be back in this little safe space of Virgin River, loving it. <sighs> Our favorite place of all time. It's like a nice little cozy blanket. It is like a little a fire cozy blanket. Mm -hmm. and a we dog. forget the world is burning down around us. All right, guys, uh, that's it for us. We'll be back next week with episode three, which I don't know the title of, but it will be right here on it your doesn't. favorite radio station, WWVR, Virgin River Radio. WWVR FM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you haven't already, if you want to support the show, you could sign up for our Patreon, Supercast, or Apple subscriptions where we cover... Uh, 90 Day Love in Paradise and Sister Wives and we're doing some cult docs over there you can leave us a review if you don't want to join on the paid feed or you can just share the show that yeah, does please. some great things as well I mean really the more people you tell about Little Miss Recap the bigger Little Miss Recap gets yep. so, mm -hmm. and we, we like feed that. off we feed off your energy we feed off your human friends there you go, go. alright guys thank you so much and we'll see you soon on your bones. Bye. Bye.